This presentation was given in Yorkville, Illinois, in February 2015 at the Chapel on the Green by organist Martha Price and me, Howard Manthai, to commemorate the 160th anniversary of the building's construction. In this segment, you'll hear about the wonderful pipe organ that was purchased in 1899. Many people helped in the research for these presentations and our sincere thanks goes out to all of them. If you have any suggestions regarding the presentation, please send me an email at the address on the screen. The instrument of choice for most all churches is an organ, and historically, a pipe organ. These photos are very large, very expensive organs. Well, some 44 years after the building of the Congregational Church in Yorkville, the congregation decided it was time for them to have a pipe organ as well. In this news clipping, we learned that $1,000 was spent on an instrument. Now, that's as much as the building cost to construct in 1855. And all this was possible thanks to a Pekin, Illinois firm called the Hinners Organ Company. Using the catalog concept so popular with the Sears Company, they too published a catalog for organs. In the end, small rural churches such as ours were able to purchase a full pipe organ. Now take a moment, if you wish, and pause the presentation and read about the arrival of the organ. And here it is. This is an early photo showing that the original organ was installed in the front and center of the church. And another showing the altar at the very bottom the choir, and then the organ. This close-up photo shows organist Mrs. Shaw at the controls. There is an account that during the winter months, when she would come into the unheated building to practice, that her husband installed some type of tent arrangement to shelter her from the cold. We wish a photo were available of that. Now, some of the comments about the mechanics of a pipe organ are in order. In these early sketches, the illustration shows that bellows were a must in order to pass air through the pipes. And that was the case for our first Hinner's organ. Manually, bellows had to be operated, and a Mr. Durston Osi is credited with having that job. Prior to the pipe organ, we don't know what was used by the congregation, perhaps a piano or perhaps a reed organ as shown here. In fact, we know an organ of this type was used in the Pavilion Baptist Church as detailed in segment one of this series. The pedals at the bottom are pumped manually by the organist in order to generate air for the uh, reed organ to operate, hence the name pump organ. Rows of pipes, called ranks, make up the heart of a pipe organ. A variety of pipes made out of wood and metal of varying sizes generate the tones as air passes through them. Here our organist, Martha Price, is shown next to two very large wooden pipes. These are from a very large pipe organ. This diagram shows that as a key is depressed, air is channeled to appropriate pipes. And then a control called a stop also determines which combination of pipes the air is allowed to flow through. On the organ, these stops above the keyboard are manually moved by Martha to generate various tones and effects. In fact, 
This style of pipe organ, using what is called a tracker action, is all mechanical. No electrical components exist at all. And these close-ups show the various controls that the organist manipulates while playing. And like a piano, pipe organs need tuning from time to time. Ours is tuned twice a year. The pipes themselves are in a separate space or room, and a tuner must adjust each and every pipe to the correct pitch. Now in the 1960s our organ was moved and the pipes relocated. And here, by way of the second floor in the Heritage Hall, just above the pipe organ, access to the pipes is through an opening and the blower, of course, takes the place of those manually operated bellows now. And inside the room, here are the various pipes. This view shows the rows, or ranks, of the pipes. Note that some of the pipes are wood and others are metal. And in the very back of the chamber, those are the show pipes that you saw earlier when the organ was in front of the church. Here is one rank. And today, those pipes are directly behind the organ. And the music flows out of the grill, as illustrated. Well, there you have it. That 1899 Henner's pipe organ is a real treasure for us at the Chapel on the Green. This is the end of segment four.